2004 Pistons versus the 2017 Warriors. That's been a hot topic. Who will win in a seven game series? So by now, you know, we've all talked about it. We've all had our opinions, formed our opinions. If you guys remember though, this actually started back in 2016 with Rachel Nichols on the jump. It was a hot topic back then. As soon as Kevin Durant went to Golden State and that was what everybody was talking about. Who will win, right? Who would win? It's funny because they were politically correct back then, right? They were saying all the right things when it came to the team. But when it came to Draymond versus Rasheed, they didn't pull any punches. They said that Draymond and Rasheed are not in the same class and that they believe he would even say the same thing. Definitely was not the case. Recently, Draymond, he kind of reignited a seven or eight year old conversation um, when he went on Shaq's podcast, right? The big podcast. And he said that uh, the 2017 Warriors would have mopped the 2004 Pistons because 2004 Pistons only scored 70 points. <laughs> now, Rasheed Wallace replied, he clapped back, and he said that the Pistons would beat the snot. Out, we got kids watching, right? Out of the Warriors. And he said he loves Draymond. He said, that's his young dog. That's my young dog. He said, but Draymond was too little. He said, and Steph Curry wasn't a defender. So, of course, Draymond clapped back. And he said that in a tweet that the Warriors would have smacked the Pistons, he said, quote, y'all were scoring 72 points per game. That's not winning a half. And we're putting you in every pick and roll. Let's see you move them feet. That one ring was great, though, big bro. We all appreciate it, end quote. Moving on, <laughs> Amari Stoudemire, of all people, shout out to Amari. He got involved in the conversation. He actually replied to my post on Instagram, and he said that she is right. Draymond Green is too short to guard him. He said, trust me. Now, if Amari Stoudemire is 6'10", right, super strong, super athletic, can jump out the gym, if he's telling us to trust him, when it comes to that matchup, somebody who had to guard him for many years when they were both in their prime, that's something to listen to. So from there, Rip Hamilton weighed in, agreeing with Rashid that the Warriors would lose. But he said the Warriors couldn't match up with them in a seven game series because Ben and Rashid could both switch everything. And he said he believes the Pistons would have won in six or seven games. Then finally today, Rip again took the Instagram and said that People need to put respect on the Pistons' name. So it's getting spicy, bro. It's getting spicy. I'm sure we've not heard the last from Draymond or Rasheed and or possibly other Pistons. So I'm just waiting for that podcast episode with all of them. I, I want the round table, five on five. I want to see it. I just want to get everybody up to speed with regard to what's been happening so we can really like contextualize this. So what are your thoughts on everything that we have said thus far? I love you, Draymond. But you tripping, bro. Talk to him. Wallace in today's game will easily be, easily be a top five big in this game today. Everything that he can do defensively and especially offensively. We talking about a man that can shoot with his left and right hand from the three point line. Right. You know, with range. So, and yep. please don't even mention on the box. You can't do anything with Rasheed Wallace. Draymond, I get yeah. it. You know, you, in this modern era, you're a defensive guy, right? More of an irritant than a defensive guy, if you ask me. But a defensive guy, I get it. But Rasheed Gang is definitely something that's underrated and it's overshadowed by the antics between him and the refs. I think a lot of people really need to go and watch some tape on, on yeah, Dallas, especially in his Portland days when he was that, that all star uh, over there in Portland. Skinny she. Yeah, she was an absolute monster. Yeah. Um, and Rashid is he's totally right. He's totally right. Listen, when you look at guys like Rashid and Ben, you know, not to mention Ben plays 40 minutes per game in the playoffs. Right. You know what I'm saying? They plus. switch on everything. They can check one to five. They can move their feet very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and on top of that, you gotta worry about a guy in Rip Hamilton who's running around the entire game. He's also averaging 40, 40 minutes a game with all yes. that running around. Yep. Man, come on, bro. Man. Okay, so I echo a lot of what you just said, especially the point about Rashid. The only reason he's not renowned the way KG and Dirk, all those guys, Tim Duncan, the, way, the reason he's not renowned the way they are is because he's so unselfish of a basketball player. 
he has the talent that matches all of those guys. Every single one of them. Every right? One. He could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with KG easily. He actually had more range than KG. KG oh, couldn't yeah. step out to the three-point line and shoot the three. Right? Do your Google's on Rasheed Wallace, man. He really was that good. He literally was that good. As far as Draymond, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> if you're going to speak on the Pistons or any team, you got to come correct with your facts, my brother. The Pistons held teams to 70 points. They didn't just score only 70 points. In many of those games, during that double-digit streak of holding teams under 70 points, were blowouts. So they were scoring 70 points. But we were scoring at 95, 90, 100. We weren't scoring 70 points. Bro. So do your do your research, my brother. That's kind of bad because you were around them. You should know better. That's not a good look. It's not a good look. So just to clear that up, they weren't scoring 70 points a game like he was saying. They were holding teams at 70 points per game. That's the difference. You had teams not trying to win games, but trying desperately to avoid being the next victim and trying to score 70 points so they can snap the streak. The Nets finally snapped that streak. They scored 71 points. I remember that game. I watched it live. It was on ESPN. And the Pistons on the other side of the bench were encouraging whoever was in the game to hold them under 70. I believe it was 13 straight games. The Nets broke the record. They scored 71 points at the buzzer. And they were had their hands in the air like they just won the game. They got blew out. That same New Jersey Nets team met us in the conference finals that season. So it wasn't somebody who was a slouch that we were doing that to. We were doing that to everybody. Draymond. Man, it's it, even the, the the citizens of Sac Nasty, man. You know, Saginaw is looking at, at Draymond like, bro, what are you talking about? You Come know on, bro. Saying? Yeah, neither one of them mentioned which era you're playing in. If you're playing in this era, yeah, then you even you in even worse trouble because now you got an era where, as a big, with it just just to stick with Rasheed for a minute, as a okay. big, now you're asked to shoot. Right. The difference between bigs now and Rasheed Wallace, Rasheed Wallace actually was really good at shooting three point shots. He just didn't shoot a whole lot of them because of right. the game back then. Mm -hmm. So this guy's a guy who will knock them down. He is really going to be a problem with you defending. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like I said, Draymond, you you know you might make one now and then. You know what I'm saying? With that monkey jump shot of yours, <laughs> bro. You ain't on Rasheed's level. You Not know what even. Saying? So, like, I, man. So let's this, do this. Let's do okay. this. Let's take it matchup by matchup. Mm -hmm. Like, there's there's no way to do it properly accurately because you know we can't simulate that. Right, it will never happen. But I would like to go matchup by matchup, player for player, and then also a few different um, aspects I want to go up and look at too after we get through the starting five. First matchup, Chauncey versus Steph. Yeah. Who wins this matchup? Give us the dynamics, all that stuff. So, uh, this matchup, obviously Chauncey is the bigger guard. Obviously Chauncey is going to put his weight on Steph a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Steph is going to have to deal with post-up Chauncey a lot. Um, Chauncey, like I said, in, in a newer era, would be allowed to shoot the three a little bit more, even though he's a leader in the floor general. would be allowed to, you know, get his shot off a lot more. Right. Steph is Steph. Steph is going to run around. You're going to chuck up shots and, you know, whatever it may have you. But this is a defensive Pistons team. Chauncey... Right rip those guys dogs coming off the bench these guys ain't just gonna let you run around freely and just chuck up shots they're gonna be in your face whether you're making some or not they're gonna be on right. your ass you know what i'm saying That's so like i said it's gonna be he's going to have to work a whole lot more and then like i said when you look at minutes played for these two teams the pistons these dudes don't get off the court you know, you know mm -hmm. they're very 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 well conditioned these dudes you're gonna have a long game you know what I'm saying? And in the series, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough because, like I said, man, it, it's a, it's just a, a size thing with Chauncey. Chauncey's a big right. guard, and especially uh, going to the to the basket, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be tough for Steph. It's definitely going to be tough for Steph. It's a, it's a tough battle on both ends, to be honest. Yeah. Do you think they will cross-match, maybe? Possibly? Maybe putting Rip on Steph and putting Chauncey on Clay? Now, Rip, what do you, how do you think... I would think Rip is better, uh, uh, a better option, simply because of. I'm his thinking defensively. Yeah. Rip being able to Rip being able to to do on defense what he does on offense, run around screens. I'm just thinking because right. you know Steph likes to do that. I mean they both do, but Steph does that a lot. So I'm just thinking if they may look to have a taller defender fast enough to keep up with Steph. But you're probably right. They probably would go straight up. 
Yeah, even if they didn't, you know, you put Rip on him. Like I said, Rip is a guy that can run around with the best of them, obviously. On yeah. defense. He is a little bit more lengthy. Um, probably a better matchup because Clay Thompson, we're talking about a guy that was averaging 15 points a game in that playoff series in 2017. You can you can put Chauncey there. You know, Chauncey's mm-hmm. a big enough guard to, to deal with Clay. Right. So, yeah. Let's look at Rip versus Clay. What do you yeah. think in there? This, to me, is in large part a wash. <laughs> to me. I have a tired Clay Thompson with no legs. Mm, okay. That's what I have. By the time you get midway in that series, I have a tired Clay Thompson with no legs. You, I mean, that's a lot of running around for Clay. It Thompson. is it's Clay Thompson we talking about. So, um, him being the to me the only uh, of the two defensive guys that they have, <laughs> yeah. uh, he'll have a job. He'll definitely have a job. And like I said, you know, Clay's going to he's going to shoot a, a, a three or two here and there, but. I mean, you got a lot of running around screens to do, buddy. <laughs> yep. He would need to be in tip-top shape for sure. Because I remember when we beat the Lakers in the gentleman's sweep in 2004. Game five, it was like you said, later in the series. Game five, toward the end of the game, it was pretty much out of reach. But Kobe was still trying because that's his Kobe, right? Got to the free throw line. And he's huffing. And, like, he's, he's, he's so tired. And I see Rip in the background just pacing back and forth, just walking back and forth. He's not slumped over. He's he's fine. So to your point, you know what I mean? And we know Kobe was very well conditioned basketball player, right? To your point, mid series, that may start to affect his offense because now he may not have the legs that he had earlier in the series in games one through three, four. So good point, bro. Yeah, I might I might rock with that one for sure. Yeah, like I said that's you know, we're talking about a guy that used to get up and run five miles in the morning like it was nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's a that clay would be a, a tired man very tired man yeah i totally agree mark because <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a lot like i say you, you just look at the guys who had to deal with him back in that time man right yeah and like if you yeah. talk about an uh, era where you can really shoot the ball even more now right yeah <laughs> it's a little different yeah. next we have tayshawn versus kd this is where it gets interesting for me but i'm gonna let you go first so casey kd obviously seven footer hard to defend right uh, you look at him, you know, especially in that time, uh, very, very tough defend. Tayshawn Prince, 6'9", long arms, can scratch his ankles standing up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, right. like I said, we've seen him against some, the, some of the premier guys. We've seen him on Kobe. Obviously, you're not going to stop KD. You're not You're not going to stop KD. Right. But, you know, you can, you can ruffle him a little bit. You know, if you take Sean Prince, I mean, you long enough to do it. You can move your feet. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you definitely going towards the basket, man. You were a threat to block his shots. So it's it's more of the length of game with these two. And KD is right. tough. And that's why I have the Golden State Warriors is, you know, top heavy in this matchup. They're top heavy. Besides a couple of guys at the top, you know mm. what I'm saying? You know, so, yeah, KD is definitely going to get up. He's going to get off. He's definitely yeah. going to get off. It's how much is he getting off. And then exactly. the rest of the guys, you got to make obsolete. So I'll start by saying this. KD wins the matchup, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but does he dominate it? No. And why? I look at who eliminated KD from the playoffs this year, right? All series long before the series started, actually. They were asking AE, you know, you guys concerned about, you know, KD? And he said, you guys concerned about Jaden McDaniels? Right, and they kind of laughed, but Jaden McDaniels, in large part, held KD in check. Now, I understand it's not the same KD from 2017, right? That's it's a different version, the same way it's different LeBron from 2017. It's a different version. I understand it, but I am going to give Jaden McDaniels a lot of credit because even KD at his age still cooks pretty much everybody. So he was able to, in large part, make it very, very hard for him. And his game to me is a lot like Tayshawn's. Does a lot of the little things that don't show up on the stat sheet. Uh, Rasheed versus Draymond. Yeah, I, we kind of spoke on it earlier. This is this is not a good matchup for Draymond. Uh, it's, nah, it's a bad day, buddy. Uh, it's just what. It is. Yeah, bro. I mean, Draymond's six six. She is six eleven with socks on. And his and his release is so high. There's nowhere to get to a shot. The only the only way is is to try to bump him off his spot. But he's going to get to his spot. So there's nothing you can do, and he knows how to pass out of it. He's got great vision. He's a great passer. So when the help comes, because Draymond's going to need it, they're going to kill you. 
it's not even that difficult for me. With respect, Draymond did win the Defensive Player of the Year, so here and there, he may get a play here, deflection here and there. But throughout the course of the game, she is going to dominate that matchup. Mm -hmm. And then we all know the ultimate factor. He's going to frustrate Draymond. Absolutely. Draymond's going to do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the thing is, Rashid, Rashid gets pissed at the refs, but when a player pisses off Rashid, or Rashid goes at that player, you know what I'm saying? It's the difference. That's the difference. Draymond goes at the player. Right. You know what I'm saying? And gets himself ejected. Rashid is the refs. Ask uh, Mevin Ingo. Right. The Lakers. Oh, yes. oh my God. Oh, <laughs> Exhibit my God. A. <laughs> shot he was hitting was crazy. Off the glass, getting fouled, <laughs> fading away. Yeah, crazy. Crazy, man. And he'd be talking to, he'd be barking at him. He really just frustrate him, and he wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Yeah, you know, he so. get hit, he hit a few shots. He's going to yell all in, in Draymond's face. Yeah, just, can't guard me. Right. What Luca was saying to Rob Gobert when he was standing <laughs> down, that's what that's what we would have got. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, put this to bed. Um, uh, this isn't even, is this even worth debating? Is this even worth not, talking bro. about? It's not. You know what it's I'm saying? Not. I've hit Zaza's only hope will be trying to do the same thing he did to Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> That's literally all he would be able to do. Other than that, he's getting destroyed in that matchup. Ben is averaging 20 rebounds in that series. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. He'll, he'll have some room to block some shots. <laughs> and, he's, and he's honestly probably shooting at least 10, 10 free throws again because he's getting offensive rebounds and putbacks and he's going, and they're going to be in a penalty. He's going to go to the free. He's probably going to make about five and that's mm -hmm. okay. But that's five extra points and now they're in foul trouble as well. So, it just weren't big enough that's a really easy one that's a gimme first of all ben wallace is going to out athlete and out strength you immediately yep. <laughs> you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm talking about a guy who went up with shaq you know what i'm saying without double teams without, without double, double teams. teams what the hell is a zaza <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's like let's just keep it simple you know let's not even make it that difficult benches oh yeah yeah let's Our talk about bench. it you know what I'm saying? Versus their bench. The, the yeah. players that we have on our bench could start on some teams, obviously, right? Because when they yeah. left here, they did. So let's go through it, right? Let's let's go through the benches. Let's go play by player, right? I kind of matched him up. I would right. think they might kind of match up. You got Mr. Life on the line, Andre Iguodala, mm -hmm. versus Corliss Williamson, right? I'm just I'm just going to throw him out there. We ain't got to say I'm just going to throw him out there. All Next right. one, I have Sean Mitty Livingston. Versus Lindsey Hunter. Okay. Matt Barnes. Mike James. David West. Mehmet Okor. Kevon Looney. Darko Milicic. JaVale McGee. Elna Campbell. Who you got? Obviously. Um... <laughs> I, think it, I think it's a lot closer than I originally thought about. Because I didn't realize they still had a lot of those guys still there. Here's here's why it's not close. Here's the reason why not it's not close. close. Okay. Thoughts. The way that the Pistons rotate is the reason why it's not close. When Mike James and Lindsey Hunter came in, obviously it was to take on certain guards. But when they had bigger matchups, right. that's where you seen uh Rip Hamilton and those guys play, you know, extended minutes. Um if you gotta leave a guy in Rip Hamilton in you know for a little while and then and possibly when you bring in steph or, or clay and put the junkyard in so so rip can sit down for a minute and catch a breather it, it was it's a weird way that they were substituting these guys mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have big, bigger guard matchups in the second unit but then obviously you look at a matchup in mimit or core which is mm -hmm. that's what i was court. i was hoping you was gonna make yep go ahead go ahead that's the absolute problem for you right there you're not going to be just just the the mimic and the and Corliss. Corliss obviously is going to outbody and outstrength him all game. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. So that's going to be a problem to, to stop those two on the defensive end for Golden State with that second unit is going to be a problem. Yeah, bro. I'm so glad you said mimic. I'm so glad you said mimic because honestly, bro, when he was here, we didn't even really utilize him. Mm hmm. He was more so an after, like not an afterthought, but he was a luxury. Because when we got Rashid, a lot of those minutes that he had went to Rashid. Mm -hmm. 
in the series versus the Warriors, though, in 20 seconds, you're going to need him. You're going to need all hands on deck. And in that yeah. kind of a series, I see him really stepping up. I see him really showing because he was an all-star. He left here and, went, and he was an all-star with Utah. So he was very talented. That would be who I would think would be the biggest X factor in the series because they would need his, his scoring and his rebounding for sure yeah. in that series. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's just the strength on the defensive end for yeah. that second unit is wild. You know, so right. then you just, if you want to just irritate everybody, throw Big Eldon in there if you want to. Oh, Eldon in there. Just right. irritate the big. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's so funny spring. how Larry Brown sprinkled everybody in there. He let everybody play. Right. right. He gave everybody a chance to play. Their rotation was unique, man. It wasn't like an onset rotation. Like, that's right. Like, okay, Draymond, you want to talk? We're going to put Eldon's big ass on you for a minute. See how you And like what that. you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, don't, don't weigh him down real quick. Yeah. And Eldon, to be honest with you, was a, probably a better matchup than Ben was. Mm-hmm. Not for a whole game, but yeah. for possessions. Yeah. For possessions here and there. Ben is just a, a horse. He'll just go all day. But. Eldon was more like he's his physique, his size. That hit like it wasn't a, a 60, 70 pound difference when Eldon was guarding Shaq. You Shaq would try to bump him, and Eldon wouldn't move. Yeah. <laughs> and what helped him is that he actually played with Shaq. They both played for the Lakers before yeah. Eldon came over here. He played with Shaq. So he knew Shaq's game. So we were built to beat that team that season. We could not neutralize, but in large part negate a lot of what they did best. We had a great defender for Kobe and the great defenders for Shaq. And nobody else could step up and be that guy. It's a lot like Minnesota with Denver when you think about it. You just got to understand in this era, these guys would have different mindsets. The defensive intensity between the two eras is night and day. And That's these true. guys are built. They're built to play this type of defense. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason, Mr. Draymond, that teams were not able to score because they gave you a straight 48 minutes of hardcore defense. Mm-hmm. Energy and defense. That's mm-hmm. what they were built down. One of the most underrated teams of all time. One of yep. the greatest teams of all time. Literally teamwork. You know, yes, sir. I, I just don't get what uh Draymond was trying to get at, man. But nah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I think he said something in the spur of the moment, You're getting excited about his team that you really couldn't back up. Mention a few more things, and these are the finer details of things, right? Let's start with coaching. Let's start with okay. coaching. Obviously, you got Golden State. Steve Kerr, is, it's more about playing free. You shoot reckless shots with Golden State if you make them or not. That's just what it is. Larry Brown's the opposite. It's play the right way. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's play the right way. It's fundamental basketball. We're going to kick your ass the right way. That's, that's what it was with the Pistons. Mm-hmm. So when you look at those two details, obviously it brings two different types of chemistry with these teams. I re- you got a Golden State team that's just passing the ball around, trying to find an open man to just jack that shot. You know what I'm saying? Right. You try to get KD the ball, you're trying to get Steph the ball, you know, but everybody pretty much has the green light, mm-hmm. you know, with this team. You know, when it comes to the Pistons chemistry, we're strategically going to beat you. Chauncey's going to find the the weak matchup, and he's going to exploit it over and over and over again. Yep. <laughs> That's what you've seen in the playoffs with the Pistons. If yep. Rasheed had the matchup, Rasheed's getting the ball. If Tayshawn had the matchup, Tayshawn's getting the ball. That's if what Ben has the matchup, he got if he got a yep. little if he's got a little switched on to him and he's in the paint, he's getting the ball. Yes, yes, they're going to strategically beat you. And that's that's from top to bottom. That's from the, the starters to the bench. The bench right. had assignments when they came in. The dog pound of the pit <laughs> had assignments when they got into the game. Yeah. Everyone had a job to do. And yep. if, you're, if you have a weak player over there, we're coming. We're coming for them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Talking about practice. Yeah. <laughs> <C-Lo>. <laughs> Larry Brown is, bruh, he's going to strategically go after you. Yeah, a little bit more structure. It's a little bit more fundamental, yeah. uh, and you like I said, playing the right way is the key for that Pistons team. Larry Brown, bro, right? Larry Brown, in my opinion, is one of the greatest coaches of all time. In the three NBA Finals, right? As a head coach, in 2001, 2004, and 05 with us back to back, and 2001 with Philly against the Lakers. Um, he won with us, obviously, doing four. Should have been back to back, but whatever. Mentored by Dean Smith. 
mentored Greg Popovich. Only head coach to win both an NCAA title and NBA championship. He won with Kansas in, I believe, 89? 88. 89? I think 88. 88. Only coach ever do that. Steve Kerr, one of the greatest three-point shooters ever. He actually won a three-point contest in 1997. He beat Tim Legler. I watched it live, and I was going for him because Tim Legler had beaten Reggie Miller the previous year. Anyway. Um... Five-time champion with the Bulls and Spurs as a player and four-time champion as an NBA coach. Nine titles, bro. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. And he coached the Warriors, obviously, to the all-time regular season record, 73 games in 2016, losing to my favorite player of all time, Ron James, in seven games. Now that I got that out of the way, I could not agree more with what you said. Yeah. I think it's all about the matchups. I think they're going to they're gonna play a very, very efficient game. One thing Larry Brown was big on that I think worked to their advantage, they were very, very big on taking care of the basketball. He was very, very big. He didn't want any more than 10 turnovers per game. That really isn't realistic, but he would shoot for it, and he would always highlight it whenever they were able to do it. He was always about playing efficient basketball, clean basketball, not turning the ball over. It's all about possessions with Lay Brown. On the flip side, Golden State is very, very turnover prone. Was very, very turnover prone, will always be very turnover prone. That's how they play the game. I think that will work to their disadvantage because the Pistons are going to slow the game down. So one turnover now equates to two. Yes. Because possessions are coming less and less. That, I think, will be the biggest difference when it comes to the coaching. I think Larry Brown will exploit that in the seven game series. Yeah. 2004 Pistons were known for turning turnovers into points quickly. Yep quickly so they would have definitely uh exploited that a lot man i don't know and, you know when it comes to these two teams it's when it comes to the methods of basketball it's just night and day it's you know go out there and, and shoot crazy shots you know we turn <laughs> the ball over we turn the ball over and then like i said when you look at larry brown and the pistons team it's the total opposite take care right. of that mm -hmm. you know exploit the weaknesses go out there play smart cerebral basketball outpower and outstrength everybody use your energy outrun everybody you know what yeah, i'm saying I'll hustle everybody yeah everybody, yeah you're I gonna will everybody a, yeah mm -hmm. you just put your weight on everybody man mm -hmm. and you know that's what gave them that success so like i said you know it should have been back to back it was a shot away right now you can make me go against larry brown talking about that, that game seven man when he shouldn't have tayshaun prince on tim duncan and tim duncan <laughs> scored two or three times in a row and it's a quarter of five minutes left but anyway i still do think though as much as we're talking about matchups, I think that would be the difference from the coaching aspect. I think it would just come down for me to shot making. Is Golden State able to hit enough shots given the physicality they're going to have to deal with? Yeah. It's a lot, man. It's a lot of variables. I just think they would struggle. I think, like you said, with Clay, their shots would come short. I see a lot of empty possessions. I see a lot of careless turnovers. They're easy buckets. I see a lot of that. That's, yeah. that's what I see. The lanes won't be as open with that team as they right. are. Good point. Today. One factor left when it comes to this matchup, home court advantage. Man, home court. that's tough. So, okay. So with home court, like we're going based off of those teams, right? Those the teams in those respective seasons. So I know for a fact off top, the Pistons were 54 and 28 that season. I don't remember what Golden State was that season. The previous season, they won 73. I think the following season, they were like 69. I-60, 67, something like that. Maybe they were in the 60s. I just know they're in the 60s for sure. Okay. So they would have home court advantage. They would have game set. If you think about it, it would give them an edge. But when you think about it a little bit deeper, maybe it doesn't. Here's why I say that. I'll just put it like this. The only time we saw them in that situation, they lost. Right? 2-1, one, once again, LeBron James and Kyrie Irving, right? In game seven. That's the only time we saw them in the NBA Finals in the game seven right we never saw it outside of that so i'm not sure how much it would help them i, I think it would though however help draymond i will i think it will help draymond because draymond in that game he dropped like something like 30 points and 15 assists and he, he was five for five from three he didn't miss a three he was probably gonna win the mvp that it was the finals if they won that game so he was the only one that was just on for golden state so it would have helped him but as a team i don't know and then on the flip side we did see the Pistons play a game seven on the road in the finals. 
we've seen him play a couple, but this regime, obviously, right, in 2004, 2005, we saw him play the Spurs in the finals. So, and we lost. Now, granted, that was a different team. It wasn't the same team as 04. When it wasn't as deep. I do believe the 2004 team would have won in 2005 had they had that same team. But the only data we have is 2005 on the road. And they lost that game. So you got Golden State, who lost at home on the road in the finals, and the Pistons, who lost on the road in game seven. On the, so they both lost in their respective matchup if they would have played together. So it's kind of a wash. I don't even think home court would really benefit Golden State, nor do I think it would hurt the Pistons because the Pistons didn't get blew out. They lost by one or two possessions in that game seven. So if anything, I think it might help Detroit lock in even more so being on the road, having that us against the world mentality, back against the wall mentality. I think that may have actually helped them being on the road. And I don't know if it will really help Golden State because it really didn't help them in game seven in 2016. When you look at the Pistons, man, they've They've played just as fine in other in hostile environments with no problem. True. You know, with True. no problem. So, True. I mean, I think the home court advantage for, I would say for both teams is not an issue at all. At all. It's just going to come down to who You know what? You, you made a great point. I'm thinking about another. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I just, mm -hmm. you said that, you said there are other times when they have showed their medal. They didn't do it in the finals. But they did it in the conference semifinals against the New Jersey Nets in 2000, this is the same season. Before we played Indiana in the conference finals and got to LA, we played New Jersey, right? Yeah, Before yeah. then was Milwaukee. Milwaukee, New Jersey, Indiana, LA, right? Conference semifinals. We went up two games, lost the next three games. And that game six was a nail biter. But Rip Hamilton. Came up, he hit a big shot in the corner. It wasn't the three, but he would, he got, I think he got Jason, Jason Kidd in the air, pump fake, and made the shot from the corner and sealed the game. That was big. If they lose that game, the series is over. There is no championship. And they had just lost to the Nets the previous year. So mentally, that was another hurdle they had to get over. They stepped up. So to your point, they did show outside of the finals that they can show up when they need to in the moment. Good point. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I said, when you look at the, the test between the two, obviously the Golden State getting to where they are, but the Pistons' role to get to those finals were not easy. Yeah. Were yeah. not easy, man. Some hostile environments for sure, man. So like I said, I don't think that would be a factor whatsoever. Whatsoever. The Pistons yeah. obviously had the entire world against them. Mm -hmm. you know, they came to the, the LA Lakers, man, and prevailed and almost... I mean, they still embarrassed them, but almost right. totally embarrassed and almost right. swept the Lakers. Mm -hmm. Question. This is kind of a side question. Which road, playoff road, do you think was tougher for the Pistons? 04 or 05? We talked, we always talk about the teams being different and how they were, the depth wasn't there in 05. They didn't have those same guys. But which road do you think was tougher? I know in 2004, it was Milwaukee, New Jersey, Indiana, LA, right? And then in 2005, it was Milwaukee again. Then it was, who was that in Milwaukee? It was Indiana, and then Miami, and then San Antonio. Indiana, that was a depleted Indiana team that was missing our test. Reggie Miller was about to retire. We actually retired Reggie Miller. That was his last game, was game, was game six against us in the playoffs. So what do you think in the league at Miami? D-Wade with Shaq hitting the downside of his prime, and then the Spurs. I'm just curious as to what you think. Which role was tougher to, to get to the finals and to try to get that ring? I would just say, based off of some of the historic moments with that team that you look at, obviously, the block shot with Tayshaun. Right. How deep that series was. Uh, okay. Moments, you got you. Uh, Chauncey, yeah. Billups, you know, uh, buzzer beaters or game winners. Those series were really Indiana tough. Indiana was tough, yeah. man. We were literally like this, you know what I'm saying? We were shots uh, away from losing yeah. in a situation. So I have to go with that. Do you think that conference finals was tougher in 04 than 05? And we had Indiana in 04 and we had Miami in 05. Both yeah. Miami actually went seven. Yeah. Indiana went six. Yeah. We weren't the same team either. True. You know, Good point. We weren't right. the same team either, man. So I'm going to have to stick with 2004. So do you have a definitive answer as to who you think would win in how many games? 2004 Pistons, six games. Six games, okay. I'm with you on the team. I'm going seven games. I think this home, what we just talked about with this home court advantage, 
I think that would work more so in our favor. And the, I'm telling you, it's just the fact that I've seen them lose. I know they didn't have KD, but all we have to go off of is what we saw. And I just don't know if they will be able to, to overcome that Pistons team in the game seven, where possessions mean everything. And you know the Pistons are going to maximize errors. And you know that Golden State is very turnover prone, even with KD. If they're knocking down shots, you may have an overtime thriller. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go with Detroit. I think it's a good debate, but the Draymond versus Rasheed portion of it is not a debate. I think we put that to bed. <laughs>